Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chilling. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chilling. Shall we straight chilling? Serial killing? Five cold fillers on the mic, got you reeling. Five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling. If you catch a one star, no time for feelings. Got a demon DJ all the ones and twos. By the name El Sabato, don't get confused. So grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two. And prepare to hear the legend of the straight chilling crew. What up, nerds? And welcome to a very Technicolor episode of Straight Chilling. My name is Bob, and I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 252, recorded on Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Color Out of Space. It is the first new release of 2020 we're going to be talking about. Strap in. Before we get to the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from... uh, I don't know. Where the fuck do you live at, Randy? You move too much. Goondocks, bitch. Goondocks. Are you a goondocks saint? Sure. (laughs) Are you eating baby roots? We're combining too many elements here. Just slamming baby. (laughs) Baby? Eating baby roots and saying limericks about Christ or something while I murder people. (laughs) Damn. Okay. That's the goondocks saint. Last but not least, calling in from Southern Korea, we got our boy Soju. What's up? What up? It's your boy. Blurple stains. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna refer to the color in this film all day as blurple. So go ahead and put that in your all pipe right. and smoke it. All right. <laughs> It's not a very smoke good it, high, Randy. but I will smoke it. <laughs> Blurple. Oxy That's great. Won't Blurple. Even get that actually, that, that is actually something that might be a stain. So congratulations. Yeah. Blurple Nurple stains. succeeding at your, your naming convention <laughs> the, for the first time. That's my yes, favorite sir. flavor of Kool-Aid, Blurple. Oh, Blurple. God. It's such a good natural flavor. <laughs> I hear Nick Cage likes Blurple as well. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Nick. <laughs> Not yet. We will momentarily. Before we do, I want to talk about it. Tackle some housekeeping. We have things we need to talk about with Nick. <laughs> that was pretty good, man. Let's uh, tackle Thanks. some housekeeping real quick. Um, by the time this airs, the uh, February poll pick will have officially ended. Um, there's still a few days left to vote uh, at the time of recording, though. Um, last I checked, High Tension is still winning. Most likely, High Tension has now won, and we're going to be talking about that very soon. Um, and that means that right now, as we are in your ear holes, the March poll pick is currently posted. Oh, shit. What is it, Bob? What is it? The theme. Spill it. The theme for March is going to be Universal Monster Movies. (gasps) Oh. And Randy, (laughs) what are those three movies? Well, here, here for the clutch is me. Um, so we have. Uh, I remember them. Come on, Bob. They are the Mummy, nineteen thirty-two, the Invisible Man, nineteen thirty-three, and the Creature from the Black Lagoon, nineteen fifty-four. So we're talking about the OG originals here. Um, the Creature being the oldest one of the bunch, um, and that's from the fifties. So we're we're going back. We're going way back in the way back machine here. Wait, you mean some Creature cinema, is the newest of the bunch? Newest, that's what I meant, yes. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, wait a second. That's, that's not meant. how time works. <laughs> <laughs> Time's a flat circle. You, you have such a limited perception of time. <laughs> <laughs> I pity you. Nice. I'm I excited to uh, to tackle these movies because like, I've seen I ha- like the big ones like you know Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, but outside of that, I haven't seen really any of these Universal Monster movies, so it's a blind spot. Yeah. yeah. They're not. And also with like the new universal movies coming out, like the new invisible man. Of course we saw that baller, uh, Tom Cruise, mummy that came out. (laughs) We're going to see all the connections and get a lot of like, yeah, we really need to see how they built off the source materials. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) The invisible man is killing me. (laughs) It is killing me. Oh shit. Dude, new, new t-shirt. I had the invisible invisible (laughs) man. What would be on it? Add it to the list. I do the know. universal. Just, just somebody hanging out. 
Oh shit! Just Classic Universal that. Mangs, Wolf Mang, Invisible Mang. <laughs> I'm still not even sure what we mean by that, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh shit. <laughs> are we gonna make oh, it oh shit okay yeah uh, hung up. the last bit universal of pa- shit patreon news so yeah if 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 you do support us at the five dollar level or above you get the chance to vote on our march poll pick get your votes in you have until the end of march we'll be talking about the winner in in uh, april um also in patreon news we have a brand new patreon supporter uh big shouts outs and a big thank you to nicole b hey. nicole! holla thanks thank for the you. love and the support we much appreciate it and uh as is customary around these parts we now owe you the straight chilling salute. This one is straight for Nicole. Salute. Here we go. Slap my ass. <laughs> Slap my ass, Nicole. Damn, Slap it me feels in the good. ass. Slap me in. Feels good to the ass. ass. <laughs> right in the ass. Please. Inside of the ass. <laughs> Inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man thanks again nicole um justin you got some news i'm sure what are you doing what are you doing well we can talk about bracket of blood but i want to go ahead and say the reason we're recording this is because jock bob has some <laughs> some foosball game he's got to watch on sunday so we can't do Bunch our proper gorillas game. bumping into each other right. We're recording Who's early. Ball Bob, Jock Bob over channeling. here. <laughs> I want to channel Kathy Bates and Waterboy to shame Rob by watching Bob, the fucking gonna, Super Bowl. You gonna make some loaded nachos? <laughs> some Bob? loaded nachos. You got oh. some extreme <laughs> fajitas. You gonna make extreme. some ja- jalapeno poppers, Bob? No nah, man, <laughs> gotta system, make those mules, bruh. My system cannot <laughs> handle the jalapeno poppers. It puts me down. Can't yeah. do it. But they are oh, delicious. Damn. Old, old man Bob. <laughs> I know. Um, See, was it Jock Bob? Old man Bob? <laughs> John, Who am I? Old man Jock Bob. <laughs> Just, just an old so, dude running sprints. So pretty much as as we're casting now, the bracket of blood round four is still um, going, and everything is pretty close, like too close to call. For new listeners, um, what the fuck is a bracket of blood? Yeah, tell so us, bracket tell us. of blood is our game that we are playing bracket style. It's an elimination style game where uh, people are able to vote. On their favorite films from the past decade, we have whittled down from a total of 128 films horror from films. horror films from last year, of course, of course. No Toy Story 4 up in this bit, <laughs> but we are whittling down the horror films from last decade. We are left with eight as of right now, which is round four. Um, the matchups as they are right now, Get Out is at 38 versus Midsummer at 35. Ooh, Too close so to call. Close. Damn, Too close to call. Tight. So close. <laughs> From our Monsters division, we have <laughs> It Follows versus Tran de Busan, 39 to 31. Too close to call. And The Haunters, The Conjuring, uh, this one, it might be okay. The Witch at 45 versus The Conjuring at 25. Looks like The Witch yeah. is pretty locked Solid. in there Solid. Well, and macabre so. is definitely locked in hereditary at 58 versus mandy bob at 13 mandy bob they call me mandy bob i voted mandy man i i, I know mandy Don't mang mandy mang all those movies are fucking great so it's really just like they are which one do you kind of prefer i guess it is so it looks like hereditary and maybe the witch will probably be going head to head so those are the ones that would be matching up against Oof, so maybe hereditary damn. versus the witch and then the other ones are too close so it'll either be get out or midsummer versus either it follows or train to busan it we'll follows. find out soon it follows it follows <laughs> bob Oh, you're gonna curse your own movies. Yeah, what really. Like, with Mandy, yeah. <laughs> you're, you, when you call your shots, Bob, you're like an inverted Babe Ruth. You just can't yeah. call them. You yeah. do the opposite of what you say, baby. So Ruth? that that's our that's our bracket of blood. Um, also, coming up, we are heading oh, wait, into wait, wait, a wait, new wait. month. Where can people yeah. vote? Don't forget. To ah, talk. so we'll be heading into uh, round five by the time this airs. You can vote at straightchillingpodcast.com. There you will see the polls. You can vote there. 
And you can find links uh, to the direct site at, uh, on our Instagram, on our Twitter, on our Facebook, any of our socials. Also, we are promoting the, the hell out of this thing. It's also in the show notes in this podcast. That's oh, I didn't know that. Dope. Link to the Way website. Way to do it, Bob. It's always been there. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> always been there. We're killing it, Bob. You're really killing nice. it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's always been there. Um, so yeah, also we're heading into February. Not only are you getting a new Patreon poll pick, but one of our new series for the year is going to be our top five Tuesdays. So top or the first Tuesday of every month, I'm going to try and drop a video on our YouTube. That's youtube.com forward slash straight chilling podcast. And last month it was top five anticipated horror films of 2020. This month is going to be top five Korean horror films. So we talk in Korean horror. I'll give my top five suggestions for my favorite Korean horror films. And so that will be coming out on Tuesday. If you want to yell nice. at Justin for all of his choices. Yeah. If you want to tell subscribe. me how poor my choices mm-hmm. are. Tank that please, bitch. Give him the thumbs comment. down, but please interact <laughs> with it. Give me the <laughs> thumbs up, but yell at me in the comments. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> now you're you're really stretching people thin on that. <laughs> nitpicking, nitpicking. They gotta be true to their hearts. We we gotta get Randy's old uh call to arms. What was it? Hit that like, slam that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Randy kills it. <laughs> you gotta Yeah, you got you gotta slam the bell. Slam yeah. that slam bell. that bell. Which means give us a like and a follow, please. <laughs> yes, on YouTube. Uh, um, I think that this house has been kept. Uh, Is one, that correct? One last thing oh, I want to no. mention. Sure. Uh, just a reminder, we now have a sister podcast called Let's Get Physical Media. Uh, it's on iTunes, Whoa. Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere you get your podcasts. Um, we're I'm be, really tempted to play the bump right now. Don't do it. <laughs> we're we're going to be uh, dropping a new uh, episode of that the first week of February, the first Tuesday of February. Uh, we're going to be talking about all the horror Blu-rays we picked up over the course of uh, January. Some of them are new releases. Some are old releases. Uh, we're going to talk about bonus features and uh, shit we like, shit we don't like, recommends, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if you're into uh, Blu-rays, physical media in general, especially in the horror realm, which if you're listening uh, listening to us, you probably are, uh, check out Let's Get yeah. Physical Media everywhere you get your podcasts. If you're and an you- investor <clears throat> into the uh, the blues, if you like to invest in the blues, yep. check out Let's Get Physical Media. Check and out. by the way, new merch is in the works, so everybody leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, true. I know you guys want new straight chiller merch. It's on the it's way. Twenty twenty, the, the demand is there. I just gotta fulfill my end of that bargain of being the in-house graphic designer for this. Program. At Randy for new merch. <laughs> just blow his DMs <laughs> up. Just hey, blow you know up. what I'd love if everybody told me all of their terrible ideas for merch. Please do that. <laughs> uh, please do that. <laughs> Two of us. The worse, the is better. Not enough. Everybody else, <laughs> pile on, dog pile, Randy style. Let's go. But before we get into anything else, we got to talk about what we've been watching these past few days, real quick. Let's do <laughs> like it. Three days. Hey, gang, what you been watching? Sway. Randy, what you been watching? Sway. Hey, if you're wondering why that was delayed, it's because I was focused on, oh, shit, what am I? Um, yeah. What have I been watching <laughs> over always. three fucking days? Only really two things uh, come to mind. The first is last night, uh, Becky threw on um, a little movie called The Lion King tw- 2019. Oh, yeah. I watched that on a plane. Fucking abysmal. God damn, did, that's a terrible did movie. Did you find it as soulless as I did? Oh, yeah. Like, there's no <laughs> charm to it <laughs> at oh, all. Oh, yeah. Isn't it's, it wild how, like, they almost go, like, step for step, like, this no, same do. movie? But it's like, feels like nothing. <laughs> it, it's step for step the same movie, but without the charm and charisma of the animated characters they had before, and with ju- the the only thing that's there to make it interesting and new is um, the occasional riff from Billy Eichner or whoever, and it's just not going to cut it. it I don't. Yeah. I, I, I Seth Rogen should not be in any part that requires him to sing. I'm sorry. I love the man. <laughs> Give that man. Let that man be auto tuned or some shit. Did nobody pitch correct this motherfucker? Oh, that's so funny. 
<laughs> I want to watch should it not now. be singing. It's you not know? good. True yeah, horror. Well, it's not it's not anything. It's just like a cash grab. Even like <laughs> Beyonce who like like I know I'm going to be smitten dead for even besmirching any part of the her queen. Legacy. The queen but be Randy. Like the high's going to get you. Her and um Dan, uh, Donald Glover have a have can, seen Can You Feel the Love Tonight and I don't know if it's because Don, Donald Glover is an actor as well as a singer, but he's nailing it. And she sounds like she's in a booth recording it. Like there's a very clear di- differentiation. Mm. There. It's, I don't know. There's no reason for this movie to exist. And from an animator's perspective, I'm appalled that it exists because <laughs> you can, everything this movie has to say for animation could have been done in a one minute short where they're like, check out how technical we are now. We can like they've made fucking Pixar shorts this detail before, and we got it. We got it that time. <laughs> Randy's offended. Yeah. I'm offended. Safe space, my ass. Speaking of spaces, I also have been watching a little show from way back when called Spaced. Nice. Um, have you guys ever watched oh, that? with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. Yeah, um, which I always greatly loved. Um, for those who don't know, that's uh, Edgar Damn, Wright. Damn, that's a throwback. <clears throat> Nick man. Frost and um, Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg's first gig together um, with a. It's a sitcom, a British sitcom. It's extremely British. It's extremely '90s and extremely '90s dork. Not just '90s, yeah. but '90s dork aesthetic. Talking X Files here, people. So a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of shit. It's and there's so a lot of horror old. Stuff it's so great, though. The premise of it is that like Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are like what in their like early twenties, living together. Like no, no, they're not living together. It's uh, they're not. Oh wow, God, it's been a while. Why? But they're like living. This? They're all like living again. It's like Friends, but British style, but with a bunch of nerds. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of. I mean, it's it's like one of the first single camera sitcoms I can think of, and um, like it's got Tim, who is played by Simon Pegg, and Daisy, who is played by Jessica Stevenson. Couldn't remember her fucking name. Um, and then their neighbors, and then their friends, and their landlord are all characters, and it's like it's all of the things that you love about like hot fuzz, Shaun of the Dead. That's that style of like comedy of like packing in the jokes you know, uh, like swift cuts, you know, things like that. This is the, the show that really like made that happen. And, um, I'm no, I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. It's great. It's a fucking great show. Um, it's silly. It's irreverent. And for its time, it was pretty, pretty new. Nobody was doing that kind of sitcom, at least not in America for a while. Um, and this is like, you know, pre arrested development or any of that shit. So single camp, even pre office. So people weren't doing that kind of thing until, and I weren't doing that thing at the time and it's 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 great. It's great. That's all. I can't ramble any further about it. Cool. Uh Juice, what you've been watching? So in order to get uh, ready for my top five Tuesday, I've been like going through a lot of like Korean horror lately. And one of the things, so I rewatched Old Boy, and it wasn't necessarily like for this list. But one of the things that kind of like stuck out to me going through some of these like um, suggested like Korean horrors is that and then watching Old Boy again is that there's a lot of films like Old Boy's hard to like categorize as like horror. Yeah. Um, but like like in the same way that we do like, oh, psychological thriller or something like that, there's a very prominent like subgenre of like revenge films in Korea, like specifically, they were, it's like a very popular subgenre to the fact where like a lot of the movies that are in this subgenre like kind of get categorized as horror or like thrown in there sometimes. Like I Saw the Devil is another one where it's like, yeah. it's like, yeah, there's like a serial killer in there, but like it's more about this like revenge. Like, yeah, there's disturbing stuff. Same thing with Old Boy. And so when I was like making my list, since it's so prominent, I almost like had to exclude those kind of movies. Um, but I've been like really curious to like dive more into this subgenre and see like how, um, like they differ and like kind of the progression over years and stuff like that. So I watched old boy again, which it's been a while. That movie is like fucking fantastic. Um, but then I also watched another revenge one called bedeviled. And it's about this, this like kind of woman. She's like, just like abused by the society around her, like husband and like neighbors and stuff like that. 
Um, and it's like really brutal too, man. I mean, they don't, they go ham in these like fucking revenge movies. They, <laughs> it seems like they just try to keep upping the ante like a little bit, but not in like just a completely like gratuitous way. Like it's always, you spend like a, this one's a little bit of like a slow burn. You spend a lot of time with this woman, like watching her kind of like get abused and just, it's like really rough. It reminded me, I haven't watched it yet, but Rob was talking about like the Nightingale and like yeah. how it wasn't really horror, but it was just so sad. And like, there's it's, really fucked up things in it. It's kind of like up, that. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, so it just, I don't know. I've been trying to not only get into like more Korean horror, but as I was like watching more, I was like, I need to dive more into this like sub genre it doesn't really quite fit into horror, but sometimes people try to peg it in there. So, yeah, man, those Korean, like, revenge films, they're nuts. Fucking crazy. But, yeah, so I watch watch those. Sounds pleasant. Nice. Yes. <laughs> really good for the soul. <laughs> Never seen Bedeviled, but I've seen all those other movies that you mentioned and enjoy the hell out yeah. of them. So Yeah, I have to check me that too, out. yeah. Yeah, they're good yeah. shit, man. Um, yeah, they're like horror adjacent, but sure. not quite. Yeah, there's yeah. shades like there's quite a bit of brutality in them, and so I mean they're. Oh yeah. If you like horror movies, you probably will enjoy them, but it's hard to say they're like outright a horror movie, you know. But yeah, adjacent for sure. Um, I watched a movie. I'll start with uh, this little picture called "The Skeleton Twins" from 2014. Are you oh. guys familiar with that? Yeah, I've seen that. No. <laughs> so it's it's not a horror movie, um, but it it's um it's incredibly dark. It's a sad movie. It's v- it's very sad. It's a very sad movie. Um, it's so it's starring Kristen Wiig and Bill Hader and their siblings. Um, they're probably in their like late twenties, maybe early thirties, and they're sort of estranged. When we meet them in the movie, they haven't spoken in about ten years. And the movie opens with them both attempting uh, to commit suicide and and failing on the exact same day and um that event sort of brings them uh together and um we kind of like get a sense of their relationship and their relationship with like their parents and their upbringing and um it's uh i don't know it's got like this uh this very significant like scene that takes place on like halloween night and like their relationship with their father was like very much um, built around the holiday of Halloween. So there's like, there's sort of like a theme weaving throughout this movie that's sort of like, if you're interested in like Halloween or horror movies, you're kind of like, you might, might get a kick out of it, especially if you just watch Bill Hader in that it sequel. And you're like, well, Bill Hader's a fucking great actor. Watch him in this fucking movie. Holy shit. Yeah, he's great in this. He, uh, they both are. He plays a, a, a gay man in this movie and he's just like incredible to watch. He, he, I, Bill Hader's an amazing actor, and yeah, so is Kristen Wiig. Um, you yeah. know, seeing seeing. Oh, both I in remember roles. now. Okay, I remember like seeing clips from this film. Now that you're like yeah. describing it, yeah. Okay. Do you remember? But I haven't was, seen it. There was a viral video of somebody interviewing them on a press junket for this movie, and the guy was interviewing them and was like, "So, Kristen, um, what was it like doing your first nude scene in this movie?" <laughs> and she's like. That didn't happen. What? Yeah. Yeah. There's like it, the rest of the interview was just them laughing at this dipshit ah. who's definitely not seen the movie. Ah. It's really funny. Why would he think that? I think she didn't, or there was like some sort of news about her maybe doing a nude role. I don't remember, but oh. like it was, it was not for this movie. Uh, That's really funny. And so the guy, the guy definitely didn't see it. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of yeah. the long and short of it. Definitely not. Um, so yeah, Skeleton Twins. I watched it on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's streaming on there for free. If you are uh, intrigued, I definitely Whoa. recommend recommend it. It's good shit. Streaming, Bob. That's not physical media. <laughs> Whatever. That's blasphemy. Well, let me oh, talk man. about some physical media that I picked up <laughs> real quick. Uh, so I oh, watched. Boy. The other thing I watched is uh, Return of the Living Dead Part Three. Oh my uh, God! Three. With the woman with wow. the spikes and shit. Yes. So I'd only ever seen this once. People prior. like that movie. I'm one of those people now. So, okay. Are you? I, the first, <laughs> yeah. The first wow, time. Wow, turn first, on, You're changing on me, Bob. The first time I watched it was with you, Randy. We were in the VHS tape from uh, that that shop. Um, Monsters in My Closet. Yes, Monsters in My Closet. Yeah, they had like now a. defunct. It was a VHS rental store slash like toy, like nostalgia toy store. It was really, really awesome. Um, yeah. shouts outs to Lars. If Lars is listening, which he may or may not be the owner and proprietor. Anyways, 
uh, rented that movie and I don't know. We, we weren't vibing it for sure. We watched it together and we we're like, this movie kind of blows, not really into it. Um, but for some reason upon my second watch, I think kind of like knowing what I was getting into before watching it and not expecting anything remotely close to the first return of the li- of the living dead. I was like prepared for this like bizarre nineties as hell movie that has like some sort of slight commentary on like physical harm, I guess like I, it's like self harm. Uh, I don't know. I was just, I was vibing it. I was into it. There's like gore out the ass and Did it looks really good have to do with the fact that you had just spent uh, some money on it <laughs> <laughs> no Randy I know you rented it with Randy and didn't yeah, no, no, like let's it. be clear memory I rented it, you didn't like it. Well, <laughs> I, no, rent- I know I'm just saying like his memories <laughs> yeah. are I didn't really like this movie so let me go ahead and buy it on blu-ray I mean I, I also th- I think it's interesting how like <laughs> I remember watching like a couple of VHSs with you, Bob, yeah. from that place, yeah. and then you just wouldn't have it anymore. You're just like, I can't watch, I can't watch it. <laughs> I, VHSs. That You're is such the a snob. That Bob has. <laughs> I I have been spoiled by the Blu-rays and the 4Ks. I don't know. And also, mm. this isn't the first movie I've I watched the first time and wasn't I feel a big like they've fan been spoiled by you, and then revisited it and 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 acquired a taste for it so it's not like you know some movies need yeah. a second watch for me anyways this is one of them uh i'm su- i'm just surprised because like it. it was like not something we were like kind of yeah. like i remember i think i remember you specifically being like when does this end <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is the memory that bob has and it's, that, a, it's a still tight, had to buy it on blu-ray that'll always minutes. be your first oh, okay. your first impression oh okay <laughs> i think oh. it's interesting it's you have the right to change your opinion but thank you your Randy. opinion has changed Greatly, you got to fight. So I think you've lost your positive influence your right. in me and Randy, Bob. To we change need to your move opinion. back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Stat. Yep. That's it. That's all I've been watching. Let's get in the main event. Stop the bantering. Yeah, doing this for fucking. We're ever. getting down right. to the real fucking topic right now. Here we go. Dropping the old back of the box. What's on the back of the box? You're, I, you just kept going. You just kept going. <laughs> oh. All right, we're talking Color Out of Space tonight, uh, directed by Richard Stanley, who hasn't made a movie since like the 90s, I believe. Uh, uh, Hardware, I think, was the last uh, feature film he directed, which I have not seen. I don't know if nope, you've I've got that in trivia, Bob. Don't okay. worry about what you Don't you realize. worry about oh, that. <laughs> I won't worry my little head. Uh, don't you worry. So this was based on a short story written by H.P. Lovecraft, which I also have not read. So there we go. Um, this is starring Nicolas Cage, Jolie Richardson, Madeline Arthur, amongst others. Uh, this was produced by Spectravision, which is Elijah Wood's production company. Um, the plot synopsis is as follows. A secluded farm is struck by a strange meteorite, which has apocalyptic consequences for the family living there and possibly the world. Gentle Mangs. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a new movie, obviously. First time watch for all of us. Would you recommend people check it out? Randy. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. I think that, uh, like, there's a lot of good, good visual play in this movie. Um, I think that it's probably worthy on its own, on that merit alone of, of being a movie you could see in the theaters if you have the opportunity. Um, but yeah, I think it's worth a look. I mean, it's, there's not a lot of, um, I don't, I, I know this movie has been adapted, or I'm sorry, this story had been adapted a few times, but I think this is like a pretty faithful adaptation to the Lovecraft story. So if you like Lovecraft stuff, then this is probably a pretty good match for you. I love that's all like crafts stuff. Is that cool? Juice. No, Juice, no, what about you? No, we're not going to allow it. <laughs> um, yeah, I would recommend you check this out. I think it's solid horror. And also too, I know like Lovecraft can, People always talk about how it's kind of difficult, one, to get like Lovecraft um, adaptations like made, financed and stuff like that. But also just because it's like hard to bring some of these visuals like to the to the big screen. And I feel like this one like pulled it off pretty well. And, you know, definitely want to support a horror like that. I would definitely love to see more people try to tackle some Lovecraft visuals. Um so yeah, I would say support it. It's um 
It's, I mean, it's, it's solid enough. It's not gonna, I don't think it's going to blow you away. It's pretty, pretty strange um, at times, but it's, I feel like it's solid horror. I, I think you should check it out in the theaters. Yeah. Um, I feel the same way. I think this would be pretty fun to watch in a movie theater, especially if it was like packed out. Um, I think you'd, you'd, uh, you'd pick up on the, the vibe of the crowd. Um, and that would add to the experience. I think in general though, even if you can't make it to a theater, cause it's got like a pretty limited, uh, theatrical release, it's worth a watch for sure. Um, also from what I understand, Richard Stanley is trying to make like a trilogy of HP. Bob, don't Lovecraft. worry about that. Oh, uh, <laughs> films. <laughs> So, Justin, Bob, you're, you don't even need to worry about that. Your wish is going to be granted, man. You're going to get more of this just like you want. M- of this, little, per- not of this particular story. Little buddy. Of, no, of not, of this story. not of this okay. story. Okay. I was going to say that I'll, seems impossible. In the same I'll get to uni. it in, in trivia. The, trivia. The same cinematic uni, but not. Don't uh, the, you the, worry the about it. <laughs> the Stanley The <laughs> Uh, so yeah sounds like uh we all pretty much recommend this slam your eyeballs into it um and uh let's go and drop that spoiler warning we're gonna get into the rest of the movie here we go spoiler warning so uh peter lowe makes an appearance in this film did you guys pick up on the peter lowe coming back in who peter lowe is that i i isn't that isn't that the character's name from vampire's kiss is it? <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're it talking about the Peter accent. Lowe. Oh, the, the like, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. the character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I picked up on Nick the accent. In this movie, he is not like as big as he was in like Mandy, which is kind of what the expectation was, I think, just because of the color yeah. palette and the I think they color palette of this movie up. and the success of it. Yeah. Yeah, which I mean, it, it makes a kind of sense. And he's not, com- he's not like, he's not acting like a normal actor. Like, that's always true. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, he's it's a little more subdued. He does sneak into some Peter Lowe, though. He, Dude, is, I think yeah, he, when, when he starts freaked out, out I was like, like, "That is vampire." I think it's right time now. for you to learn your lessons. Yeah. And she, I don't remember what he says, but it's he like I, freaks out on his daughter at one point. He's like, "Okay, so just get out of my face." He sounds or like and I was like, what? It's crazy. He said, <laughs> he said, "Yeah, he goes off on his daughter, and he's like." Do me a favor and get the fuck out of my sight. No, yeah. I'll do you a favor and get the <laughs> fuck out of you. He, Which doesn't it sounds make like any fucking, fucking Derek sense. Zoolander. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Because otherwise, he's supposed again, to be this like normal weird. dad. Yeah, just yeah. like this, like like oh, the tomatoes are coming in weird. And then he's like, <laughs> it's time for you to go to fucking hell. <laughs> it's because the color. Dude, it was pretty spot on brain. though, like Peter Lowe. Yeah. If you I, haven't seen Vampire's Kiss, stop and go watch it right. Yeah, now. stop well, watching <laughs> color color and finish this, listening to this cast and then go watch well, that okay. movie and then listen to our Vampire's slam Kiss. Slam that cast, bell and then give us and all of then your money. go <laughs> Make sure to slam Since that. Since we're bell. giving directions, let's say uh, go ahead and <laughs> donate all of your all of your earthly possessions to us and walk into slam the ocean. Slam that bell. Let's talk. Damn. <laughs> into the ocean. That means they can't build up more worldly Look, I'm trying possessions to, build a cult to give here. to us later, okay? Let's, Come on, uh, Randy. Let's yeah, let's dive into the plot. Let's talk about this little plot here so the movie okay. s- opens up with this uh monologue happening from some disembodied voice talking about like deep dark woods and yada oh, yada yeah. spooky stuff and he mentions like arkham and whatever creepy stuff and then we come to this girl hanging out on the beach she's like performing a spell she's got a horse and you're like what is her name i legitimately thought like Lavinia. am i watching am Lavinia. i watching the wrong movie i was i was like this looks like a fantasy like what I well, thought that too, I think especially because of to. the source that we had. <laughs> yes, yeah. which was legit. I had to do. I had to check it out. Yeah, I had to no, check it's it out. like. Um, she, well, I think that was intentional. You're supposed supposed to like connect her specifically with like turn of the century, like the witch era or whatever. But the the, dig, the giveaway for me was that she had like purple tips on her hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's got, the and then purple, some dude in a yeah. fucking the blurple college tip. shirt just walks in, and is like, hey. <laughs> yeah, the, the hydrologist on? happens. Yeah, the hydrologist. He's like, oh, sup, girl? And she's like, you're trespassing. He's like, oh, my bad. And 
That's about it. Yeah. Oh, my bad. So, yeah, they're, I guess the, they live in a small town. They're going to build like a dam or something. Um, yeah, he's yeah. he's surveying the area for the dam building, which it seems yeah. like Nick Cage and his family are not selling their property to the city ordinance or to the city to do that. Yeah, they um, live on a lot of like land. And so they're kind of like out in the sticks. They keep <laughs> that's life in the sticks. I love, I kind of like that joke. They kept coming, <laughs> especially because it kept being delivered by like Nick Cage, but it just got that's more and more like frantic. <laughs> it's life in the sticks, but they do live out and kind of like the outskirts of town. They at one point they say like the closest hospital is like an hour drive away or some shit. Like they're, mm-hmm. they're not close to anything. No, they're not. Yeah, so, so there's a family. Oh God, La- Lavinia, the the girl that we meet at the beginning, she's like performing a spell, and she asks like for her the cancer to leave her mom's body, so her her, her mom's battling with cancer. She also asks like be like strong to like give her strength, and she asks to like leave the town that they're living in because she just like hates living where they're at, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere. But yeah. To also, escape. Yeah. She can just like ride around on a horse, which seems kind of f- cool, I guess. I don't know, yeah. but she hates it, which is, and it's beautiful as shit, by the I way. I hate it out here in this gorgeous area with my which, horse. I mean, she's also like a teenage girl who's like isolated. Like, yeah, it doesn't seem like she has any friends. Like Listen. there's, they're an There's hour really, away from a damn hospital. There's nowhere to go shopping. Get your I'm, nails I'm on her done. side with all that shit. Like, I would love to be in that area for like a week. Exactly. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that's where you go vacation. Well, yeah. we, uh, we meet her brother next and he's like getting really, really stoned in the barn doing his thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. This, he's a this like movie, teenage kid. Yeah. This movie is kind of like a stoner movie because we got like uh, Chong. <laughs> Tommy Chong playing a character later <laughs> and all these like, well, there wild colors. Like you could just eat some shrooms and watch this and probably have a great yeah, time. Yeah, but it's or have a fucking weird have trip. A nightmare. Like Yeah, yeah, you probably like, yeah. There's some times where be. it's not it's not so chill. <laughs> yeah, I I I would like to watch this movie with the uh totally legal uh uh lead <laughs> that I have. Disclaimer. Totally, yeah, um totally legal. But I didn't. I for this first viewing, I really didn't want to do that because I wanted to make sure and get it. I was getting it all. I had a feeling yeah. it'd be a little, little bit uh, tough to follow otherwise. And boy, was I right! Um, it would have been really difficult for me to keep keep focused on this shit otherwise. Yeah. So no, I don't know if it's a good stoner movie for my taste. Maybe um, the second watch, second sec, second time round. Yeah, for a second watch, I feel like it might be fun. Yeah, uh, we meet mom next, and she's like, she works from home. She like trades stock or something uh, financially based like that. She has to like get on important phone calls and stuff. And we find out that she had a, a mastectomy, and her and Nick Cage have like a, a tender moment on the porch, and it's 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 very sweet. But I guess she, uh, she's battling cancer. Nick Cage, I guess, is playing. Um, he's an artist. He's like a painter or something like that. Yeah, but they, uh, do they ever he? show him arting? Yeah, he's supposed no, to be an yeah. artist. I don't think they all do. he does is try and raise fucking alpacas, and they make a bunch of jokes yeah. about him. And also grow alpacas. tomato. Like I guess he's got a garden. He's yeah, kind yeah. of like just all over the place. They're, yeah, their last name is they're, they're the gardeners. So. They're, they it's t- like t- it's like the, the Dietz family up in there except they're not at each other's throats so it's yeah. like you got the, the the dad who wants to be es- escape from from the inner from the city and from all like from people and be isolated and then the wife who doesn't really want that or doesn't entirely want that and who's like working a full-time job or whatever she's like uh she's a stockbroker i believe yeah something like that yeah there definitely feels like there's some tension between the family even though they're like some tender modes but also too like yeah she like they're like oh this is our dream that we got away but then yeah she's like trying to stay super busy and like the internet doesn't work real well and he never wanted to live there because it was his oh, dad's oh, place shit. or something there's some yeah. weird stuff going on that doesn't really feel fleshed out to me yeah and I he's agree. like trying yeah. to like cook and shit but he's bad at it and like i don't know Oh, yeah, and I think he, that was like, to support her alpacas. because she was sick. Yeah. The alpacas, yeah. I mean, like, it was the, like a I poor choice. <laughs> so there's like some family tension for sure, and then in the middle of that, we have this like huge meteorite crash land on Earth, and it's like crazy, blurple, glowy, and shit. And uh, yeah. after that, the family starts kind of acting weird and uh, hearing things and seeing things, and then like the the landscape starts changing around them. The environment changes entirely. And uh, yeah, shit gets out of hand. And their dogs melt and shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so yeah, okay. So yeah, one night the meteorite hits and it like 
shines this big blurple light and they like call like the police and everybody out like hey come check this out even the hydrologist like looks at it and he checks out the water and the big thing is he's like hey don't drink the water like i think it's contaminated whatever but but, yeah everybody (laughs) does like peter lowe drinks like his bourbon with some (laughs) ice in it and like like it shows like scenes of at times like people drinking the water essentially Tommy Chong loves that shit they have a well too so they get a lot of their water from like this natural well that kind of plays a part in it Um, yeah that's where the thing kind of resides by the end it's like the centerpiece of the movie the mm -hmm. well yeah because then the meteorite like disappears like it just like is gone one day by the time the news gets there they're like oh this dude's full of shit there's no meteorite but yeah it vanishes it's weird yeah, yeah, and it seems like it's growing, like maybe a, like a move to the well or something. Yeah, um, it's fucking with their all their electronics and shit. It's like that's kind of where things kind of start. Can I can I point something out? And this is kind of my major gripe with this movie. Um, like, of like I enjoy. It, don't get me wrong. Like it's it's fun to watch or whatever. But it's pretty clear to me that the thing that took me out of this movie most was the acting overall. And it's not just Nick Cage. People yeah. are kind of like. It feels like half-assed almost for the first. It like, felt the, stale. It felt really not like like no charisma going on, and I don't know why that is exactly. Like everybody was doing their part. Like I mean, they're reading it as written. I'm assuming, and it just doesn't. I, I don't know if it's maybe the girl specifically, but like my first impression of her was kind of like, okay, well, you're you're like sending all these like weird mixed signals. I'm not sure. Like I say, you want to be like you're a teenager, or whatever. You're doing your thing, but then like she kind of hates everybody and kind of doesn't. And it's like, I mean, I feel like I'm describing a good character, but it doesn't come off that way. I, I'm going to put a lot of this problems for this film. Cause I felt a very similar way. Like I took a note. I was like, the acting feels like stale or like, it's just like, it's not pulling me in. I'm mm-hmm. going to put like most of the problems on this director. Like I, fe- I feel like there's a lot here that was like almost, and some of this, the, the way this movie ends up for me is a little bit lower, but in a similar way that I felt kind of with like Mandy, except that I feel like that, that got like, I feel like where everybody's going to end up more on this movie is more how I feel about Mandy. But I feel like that guy was able to get much, much better performances out of Nick Cage, like I think that's where I think like that Mandy movie steps was more, it up. I think like like this movie is to me, and in so many ways, similar to Mandy, and it's just like hard not to compare the two. But yeah. like, if I'm gonna compare the two, then the thing I'm gonna notice is that this movie feels more sedate than that movie. Like things are not as completely turbocharged, insane like they yeah. are in fucking Mandy, and that's kind of where it falls. But like, you can get away with being like kind of having a little bit of wooden acting if the wood then gives way to some big fucking bombastic thing. And this movie kind of does that, but it doesn't do it to the same level. And the woodiness is, is even firmer for me. And that maybe I it's not it's just, just the, acting. the director. And it's also, it's also maybe the writing because I don't know where a lot of these characters maybe. are coming from. The fact that we don't know, like we know all the shit about alpacas, but we don't know the central conflict between the uh, Nick Cage and his <laughs> wife. That's kind of important and important yeah. oversight to me. Yeah. True. That's true. No tigers in this movie. Plenty of alpacas, though. Yeah, it, I kind of agree with you guys. I see what you're saying. It's it's like the ideas are there, but they're not fleshed out. And at the same time, this movie felt long to me. Like, yeah, I, I it pa- did. Yeah, I thought it was like winding down, like getting to the end. So I like hit the pause real quick, see where I was at, and I had another thirty minutes left, and I was like, "Fuck, mm-hmm. thirty minutes." <laughs> so and it, it just feels like even though he kind of took his time to tell this story. He kind of wasted a lot of that time with things that were not fleshed out. Or like I think it was intended developed. to be, I, I feel like that's like the result of somebody coming in to punch up the script with some, some humor and they drop some like information yeah. out of the script in order to make way for alpaca jokes. No, not with Spectre oh, vision, man, maybe with another company, but I, like they do that thing where they're like, I re- you make your fucking movie go, you know? Like, okay. Yeah. I well, think this guy's just case, not as just... good of a director because even like the, I feel cause like the kid actor, he was in, um, 
house of house or ha- <laughs> haunted house the haunted house. houses <laughs> the house haunted of hauntings <laughs> yeah whatever he was in that dope show and he like did like i feel i just feel like the director was it didn't feel like he was trying to pull anything out of anybody it feels like he was trying to kind of ride that wave off of like the stylistic success of of mandy but he wasn't able to like give it that like full scope of like vision. He, I, I just feel like people in this movie are generally like not at reacting the way reacting in a big enough way to what they're seeing. Like, okay, this is a key example. So when the wife, there's a point at which the, um, uh, the mom or the wife or whatever, uh, whose name Teresa, Teresa is cutting carrots and shit. And so you can tell that like the, the color or like there's like a there's an audio cue for the the color which is like this high squeal sort of thing that's fairly subtle but you can definitely notice it and you can see that going through her head and her she's kind of like getting a glazed over look as she's chopping carrots and then her son jack the kid from hill house like taps her on the shoulder and she chops off two of her fingers and then she says you know dinner's ready or whatever and she's got her fingers off and you know that makes sense because okay she's still under the trance but then a few minutes later it shows them driving in the car and she's like i just don't know how i could have been so stupid it's like your fingers yeah, are off your fingers are cut off like yeah she's if uh, you that's snapped true. out of it then snap the fuck out of it You'd be like, yeah <laughs> like i i kind of yeah i agree with you like i like the glazed over look and they show the fingers yeah i wanted at least like to hear like the daughter scream or something You'd be like ah, yeah like a freak out and like then you would. later on <laughs> like they go to the hospital which is an hour away yeah. they apparently can sew them together and they're just like oh okay this is great surgery they come was back a success. To, the surgery was a success so everything's good and she's like oh i'm so silly and then she gets home and starts like picking up her son and she's like you do not pick things up when you've had your fucking fingers reattached <laughs> that day Go yeah lie i down. agree <laughs> see and that's it was just like almost there where like i liked that scene because like not only that like it's starting to affect not only the landscape, but like time as well and their minds. And like they dive into it a little bit more. It's pretty much, it's kind of like Annihilation where it's like got this things bubble. Bleeding. Where it's it's like, a lot like yeah, Annihilation. Uh, yeah, affecting sure. things around them. And so like she even cracks an egg and inside the egg is like the blurple color, which kind of looks like blood sometimes. Oh, I thought it was yeah, blood. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just that weird like pinkish color, but... um. So it's like you see that and then, yeah, she cuts her fingers off, but nobody like really freaks out about it. And then um, like what what's that? the cat? It's it. There's a cat that runs around the it's house. It's like G spot. G spot. That's that's, G, that's Chong's cat. Yeah. And it, it's and hilarious. Like, We're told in the text of this movie that that joke is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. And he's like inside out he's like burned or something uh yeah and he's still running around going, doing cat shit but he's he still like running around and so um like as they get in the bubble like they lose sight of like time and themselves and like what's logical and because then like when the parents are gone too the kids are like supposed to be taking care of the house like the brother's supposed to be like putting the alpacas away and like he gets lost in his like own yard he's like i've been lost for like the whole day like i don't even yeah. know how i got here <laughs> like um and it's like the girl she's like doing dishes and she just kind of like phases out too she gets to the go little puke. boy yeah the little boy's like talking to people in the well he specifically yeah. says like oh my friends like i'm playing play with my friend he does a great he does this like creepy laugh at one point where he's like i'm playing with my friends and he like laughs or i was like this kid's <laughs> i like that kid man he's he's a good actor yeah. um when we we uh later in the movie we actually we follow uh, the hydrologist and uh police officer into chong's little like hut that he has put together that's on these people's mm-hmm. property he's a squatter and like they know he's there i guess they're just like cool with them living on their property or something because um, he's chong he's just chilling he's like off the grid and I, he's like an ex electrician or like a, re- a retired electrician so his house is all like wired up with this crazy shit. Your future and he uh, he's recording <laughs> He's recording audio of these sounds that are happening happening underground and he's saying they're like aliens and he's like explaining like these noises started ever since the meteorite hit and he's like they're they're talking to me man the the aliens are down there and they're like oh this dude's fucking nuts 
Um, but then like <laughs> the the cop gets like killed by this tree monster thing. That like, was actually that scene you're describing of them talking to him while he's recording. That happens mm-hmm. earlier, and I think no, it happens toward the end. Yeah, it's towards the end. They come back later, and he's dead in a chair while the recording of him telling talking about this. Uh, whole thing okay, happens. so we're talking about two different scenes. Those so are two different at one scenes. point, the hydrologist shows up, and yeah. he's like, "Hey, I tested the water. With, you guys um, should drink it." And sun. that's when that's when he sees the boy, and he's like, "What are you doing, man?" And he's like, oh, "I'm playing with my friends." Ha ha ha. So it's before right. they go like full crazy, but right, they've exactly. already started to be affected. And then he comes back later with the police officer because yeah, then right. they're in the city and like a hunter has been like, Hey, I was he out found in the like woods. an amalgam Look creature found. Yeah. It was like a bird and a deer and like all these things like melted, melted together. Yeah. And, and the hydrologist is like, it looks like I liked how they explained this too, because we just like watched Chernobyl or whatever. He's like, yeah. it looks like radiation burns or whatever. And they're all just so, like, Goop. <laughs> yeah, so you don't really know exactly what's happening like with this meteorite, except that like it's it's affecting the world around it. Um, it's and like it's it, in like, the groundwater, and the groundwater's feeding everything. But it, yeah, but it also makes like it makes like a perp or a blurple praying mantis at one point, and yeah. like all the flowers are blurple, and like everything's blurple, and it um, makes people have, have hallucinations, and you know, like, yeah, it, it does a lot of shit that you don't understand. Which, but then yeah, sometimes it's an so. active like blurple, like sometimes like it's active like blurple. This, it like has tentacles. It like reaches yeah, it's got out. like an electromagnetic field or something. <laughs> Yeah, so once shit really color. starts going down, there's this. So the first thing where you're really like, oh my God. Well, the cat, I guess. But then the next thing is like the kid is like heading toward the blurple, and the mom like goes to get the kid, and like the blurple comes out and grabs them, and it's like this big tone, and they're like, oh my God. And then they're like fused. fused together that's yeah, like now he this, melted through her to her back. yeah now this is gonna be this, like the thing of this movie that is yeah. like that is the thing like that's the most the mob like, because they show part. it yeah. yeah so then like kind of how you were saying like people don't react very well so the mom and kid like are fused together and like they carry them into the house and they're like, Oh my God, the kid is like half of his face is like in his mic, the mom's back. Yeah. And like, and he's like crying like the whole time. And Mm -hmm. the mom is like, they can't speak, but they're like moaning out in pain. Yeah. And like, they're trying to like feed them. And the mom like laps water out of this bowl. It's like really like an animal. Like an really, animal. <laughs> really disturbing. So it's yes. the dad and these two kids, um, the the son and the dog, the teenagers, and they're now to like trying to take care of their mom and their dad's kind of the going insane too. Stops working. The yeah, car is like, not going to happen. The his car arms is a like sucker. start to burn. <laughs> that scene is hilarious. <laughs> that scene is pretty good. The Nick car Cage is not freak happening. Out. Freak out in the car. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. He beats the shit there out of the car. There were some good Nick Cage moments in this. <laughs> not not as not as much as I'd hoped. But yeah, I was hoping for ones. a little more. That but one in the tomato thing. scene where he eats the tomatoes and they taste like shit and he starts just throwing them in the trash whipping can. them into the can. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's a Peter <laughs> Lowe moment. He starts speaking Ooh, in that weird yeah. accent. And he also, when he, he freaks out on his daughter, that's a solid one. And then at one point, like earlier in the movie, he just says like, it's time to milk the alpacas. <laughs> 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 it's like, damn, dude, calm down about the alpacas. There's one point where the, where he's driving back when his when uh, Teresa's fingers had been cut off and they're driving back to the house from the hospital. The first when the shot of them driving back is open by him singing very operatically for no that's reason right. like oh <laughs> she's like oh that's great honey or <laughs> something it's real fucking it's weird. very like christmas vacation like yeah LA. it is actually like their dynamic um <laughs> she's just like shut the fuck up but yeah like, this would be a very be different movie <laughs> what if holy shit what if uh what if um uh what's up chevy chase was in this movie oh Ooh. man or what if Nick Cage was in Christmas Vacation? Dude, I'm with you. <laughs> better, better option. Um, <laughs> oh my god! So ultimately, they carry the mom son fusion up into the attic, and they think their dad's gonna like kill them. 
because oh no he goes outside to kill the alpacas he gets a gun he hears the alpacas and then all the alpacas have been fused together that was a cool scene too that was cool so nick and cage has dog. to like rage out and kill this like yeah. melty inverted alpaca like creature and You're he's blowing their fucking heads off <laughs> and it's like the blood splattering all over his face that was a cool i like that scene that was a cool scene too i mean yeah any of the body horror stuff is really good in this i'd say yeah um some of the effect like i didn't like the blurple mantis some of it looks cheap some um, of it cheap and some of it looks better it's like when it was placed against reality it would look worse than when it was just fill, full filled the screen yeah which is pretty common but um so he freaks out he doesn't kill they think he's gonna like mercy kill the mom and the son but he doesn't at first he I makes mean, out he with her instead out. and oh, yeah, he transfers between spit and then he's like, oh, I'm going to let you, I'm gonna, we're going to go on a vacation. So I don't know why this is turning into Jimmy Stewart, but um, <laughs> he starts like, you know, whatever, like, like basically being like, oh, we'll, we'll make plans to go somewhere. It's all going to be fine. And then he leaves, oh. which is presumably the color, you know, like convincing him not to attack part of its being. Yeah. Which but is then what also- they've become. They really like cop out. So the the teens are like freaking out. They're like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. And then like the boy climbs down to the well because he thinks his dog is down there, yeah. and he just get like gets like absorbed by the blurb. I was like, that's by the blurb. Blast. Yeah, Blast. I didn't like that. Yeah, and I thought then- that was kind of a cop out. The sister yeah. starts kind of drinking the the blurple Kool Aid shortly after that as well. Like she just kind of gets a daze. Like so, every everybody's yeah. sort of like taken over by the blurple, and like Lavinia does not want to leave towards the end of the movie. Even she has like a a chance just, to leave, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and uh, was it the cop? Like looks in her eyes. I think it's the cop, or maybe it's the hydrologist. The hydrologist. Hydrologist, I think. And, and he sees like I guess the planet that this meteor that like, came from, or or something like that. He sees <laughs> another yeah. world in her it's, eyes. Yeah. It's like and, a Lovecraftian world, essentially. Very, yeah. It's like yeah, it's just epic. everything. Everything looks like thrashing arms and. Yeah, it's the very sky's purple, thrash. horrific. Yeah, thrashing. Yeah. Uh, but so to kind of wrap up the plot, ba- basically, uh, Nick Cage eventually does. Uh, he he locks Lavinia up in the in the attic with uh, the mom and little boy creature. With like turn it turns into this like crazy spider thing, and like right before it, it kills Lavinia, he goes. That was there. scary. It was, was pretty awesome. messed. That got up. me. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> he he busts yeah. in there with a shotgun and and blows them away, and he's like, you know, we're not family. Anymore. Anyways, um, and uh, <laughs> saves Lavinia, and uh, we already talked about like the cop and the hydrologist going into uh, Chong's joint. Yeah, um, cop the cop gets, gets picked up by a tree. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about what happens to Chong though. He's sitting like in the. He's like a he corpse. Gets, I don't know. Yeah. Well, he gets absorbed. He gets fused with like his own equipment, so his body is like there, but he's dead. Uh, but his voice is coming through. Is like a recorder. Or I thought whatever. he was just so recording. It's all about this, advanced. like I thought so too. So it's kind of like, oh no! I thought because he was like still there, but his eyes were like kind of flicked. I, I don't know. I thought, <laughs> I thought he was. He was well, who knows? Okay, that's so a cool idea. Point, though. Basically, basically, like um, all the 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 cop gets eaten by a tree for no reason. Like just ran. That was dumb. I thought um, it was dumb. And then uh, the hydrologist tries to convince Lavinia to come with him, and she does not, and nope. so he has to you know bust a move out of there. Just as something <laughs> explodes, yeah. There's uh, like a do we I know actually tornado can't remember of what light happened. That like comes out of the, the yeah uh, the well. You know, like the well just explodes up with light and just like explodes, and everything goes like gray. And there yeah, looks like there's, there's no ash. color. Yeah, and it's like oh, in a big yeah. gray crater. And I don't know still why that happened. I don't know either. What happened to Nick Cage? Did did he, he got shot anything? by a, the cop because he was about to shoot Lavinia? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. So the hydrologist is is kind of who we're left with at the end of this, and everything's like gray, and uh, we just kind of like zoom in on his face at the end of the movie, and there's another like voiceover at the end, um, and he's he's looking at the dam that they have now completed. Um, and it's full of water, and obviously he's he's thinking the water, all the water is now contaminated. Um, he's just saying like, you know, 
never going to drink the water. Um, it's, you know, the color itself was just like a message from space, you know, sort of, uh, alluding to all the crazier shit that could come mm-hmm. if just a little, just a random color could cause this sort of chaos. You know, what else could be out there? Uh, but he's, he's like older now. If it's, it looks like it's been like at least like 20 well, years. The dam's there. So he's keeping it like it had like a dam doesn't come spring up overnight. So this is at least several years later. Yeah. He's, he's got a like grizzled a old, like shit. post-traumatic yeah. stress disorder motherfucker who's seen some wild ass unrealistic colors and now just watches the <laughs> like dam horrible. for any sign that it comes back basically. Yeah. Because it seemed to have gone all the way, but, um, there was like some sort of hint, I think, or at least he's afraid that it'll come back. Um, I, I yeah. still like I don't understand the resolution of this movie. Like I, I yeah, I don't. Maybe either. one of you yeah. guys would. I, I, it's no. pretty loose. It's, you know. It just destroys the family and then fucks off forever. I guess does it fly away? Well, does it I, explode? Why do, does it explode? Why it, does it fly we away? We do get like an overhead shot of like the the area that was contaminated, as if like it's still contaminated. I think, but I, like I don't know if it. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it means. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it either. Continues. Like, I, I, I just wish, I like, know. you know, it's it's okay. I mean, it's a Lovecraft story, so I anticipated being like, oh, this is a thing that you can't understand, so we're not going to explain it in depth. Like, that's fine, but you have set out some parameters here, and this thing or this this color or whatever, it just goes away in a big explosion. Yeah. But they're like, you could explain that much. It's the resolution of your movie. <laughs> like, well, you could at least tell us some, I guess the character could at least guess why that happened. Yeah. Cause it was doing oh, fine. Like it was growing flowers. It was I've like, about doing it was mantises. <laughs> I mean, it maybe, was like, maybe I had a reaction control. to the air or something like anything. Something yeah. like, yeah, yeah they did just kind of poop it like, away. I, huh? I, I hate to be the guy asking for explanations in a Lovecraft movie, but it's just such a pivotal part like, of the movie. Just, it's not like just, just a resolution, really. Not not even. Yeah. Don't be that guy, Randy. Yeah, I don't want to be. No, I hear here you. I am. <laughs> that kind of no, that. I agree. That feels. I mean, that applies to the whole movie. Not even not just the resolution, but kind of the whole movie. It's sort of like has not understanding cool, cool ideas and cool visuals, but you're kind of like halfway getting it you know it's ha- it, I, know. yeah i'm fully like, comfortable not knowing what it is but i would like to know why it does the final action it does yeah like uh, some sort of explanation some sort of learning that we've done where it's like oh it just does this it goes from planet to planet anything really <laughs> yeah or even like if it's if it's stuck with like a common like how it affected people. So like, okay, like the alpacas get fused together. The mom and the son get fused together. And I, I was under the impression that like Chong got fused with his electronics. So I was like, okay, that's, that's cool. a cool idea. But like, yeah. yeah, but like the trees coming alive and then also like Nick Cage, just like turning like old or his skin just kind of like getting yeah, his skin just gets crusty. Gets I don't mind like, those things as much. Like, yeah, I, I hear oh. you. Like, those are also unexplained. But the thing is, like, there's a threshold of which I'm OK being not explained, like having no explanation and being like, this yeah. is just some un- undiscernible thing that we'll never understand. But like for the resolution of your movie, there, it doesn't make any. The only resolution we're given character wise is that Lavinia now doesn't want to leave. And you're like, oh, shit, it really got to her. Yeah, and that's it. But really. her eyes There's are no... blurple. So even then, you're like, okay, it's like taking over her. But then, right. yeah, why explode? Yeah, why does why does it explode? Is that that's my central question? And like, it really kind of affects what the story is to me. Mm. Like, what is it? Tr- like, what is the subtext of the story if there's no clear text? Unfortunately, <laughs> trivia will not answer those questions. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah, I don't know. We we kind of tackled the plot. I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to touch on before we rate this thing? Um, no. Nah. Nah. All right. Let's do it. The first new yeah. release of 2020. Here we go. Out of five. Randy, how do you feel about Color Out of Space? Um, so I'm glad we're kind of on the same wavelength with this. Cause it seemed like from what little we texted about this, that you guys were like having your minds blown by it. And, you know, I enjoyed this movie. I did. And I like, especially for a Lovecraft adaptation, it's, it's tough to do those with any sort of efficacy. 
unless you go real silly with it. This movie does like go silly to some extent, but it, it also tries to keep it in the horror realm. It tries to make it horrific. So, um, and it, I think for that, for like showing the unshowable, for showing things that are supposed to make people's minds break, you know, they did a pretty good job. The effects are like, are like at least the body effects are really, really good. I think. Yeah. Um, the thing with the mom and the son was fucking heart wrenching, even though I didn't know much about those characters. Um, I didn't feel like I knew them very well, but that's still just like on, on, on archetype alone. I mean, I love those parts where with the body, like the body horror shit. I even kind of like the way they did the color thing. Like you, it's an unknowable color, but they did it with this vibrant pink, which I think is a smart idea considering like all these like movies coming out with, with an aesthetic of that, like neon level that yeah. played against naturalistic stuff. I like that trend right now. I mean, it'll probably play itself out eventually. <laughs> as it always does. But for right now, I'm really enjoying it. And I think this is the perfect movie to do that. It's the color out of space. So, I mean, a lot of those stylistic choices I'm really down for and I'm great with. I think that the writing wasn't what it should be. I thought I was trying to put that pin the blame on the actors early, not trying to, but that's what I, where I felt like it was when I was watching it. But as we talked, I feel more and more like it's, it's the writing um, and the directing where it's, you know, these characters are given kind of pithy lines, but they're not that clever. And they're the way they interact is supposed to seem like, like they're not relatable enough for us to understand even where the corruption begins. Cause I'm already like from the, from the jump, I don't really understand where these characters are coming from. So then to compound on that, Oh, and now they're being mind controlled. But it's not always very clear that that's happening. And I don't know. It just, it makes it hard for me to tether myself to any character in this movie. Um, and that's not always a bad thing, but in this case, I think it is. I think they tried to do that with Lavinia, who was, as I understand it, not in the original short story at all. Like, I think they try and make her and the brother uh, more relatable, but it just doesn't really play that way for me. It really, like, I'm not sure where they're coming from other than she doesn't want to be there and she's into Wiccan shit. Like those are the only two character traits I can name for her. And she's like, I don't know. And and it's not all the other characters seem a little bit light too. Like there's, there's more emphasis placed on trying to make slice of life moments, but they don't feel naturalistic enough to then feel corrupted by an unnatural event. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I don't know where the blame lies for that exactly. Or if that was the vision as intended, I don't know. But for me, it just really didn't play it didn't feel like something was getting corrupted so much as I felt like this unreal situation just became more unreal and more unreal and more unreal. It was gradation as opposed to like this feeling that something, you know, normal and good and, you know, pastoral and beautiful was being invaded by something else, which is definitely the point of the story. Um, all that said, like, I, again, I just, I loved a lot about this movie and I just had a lot of problems with the story beats and with, the way it felt lengthwise. So I would give it a three. All right. Three out of five. Uh, Juice, how do you feel? Yeah, I think I'm going to land right there as well. Um, It's, there were some things that were like really cool about this movie. Mostly, like you said, like the body horror and just um, the alpaca scene, the mom, anytime the mom and kid were fused together. I mean, they had a couple different scenes that like really stood out. Um, Nick Cage had some cool freakouts. There was some cool action. I liked the Chong like scene where like I thought he was fused with the radio or whatever, and like just stuff like that. But then I it felt like there were equal scenes that like left me scratching my head, or I just felt like were kind of cop outs or just like I didn't really care for. Um, so I felt like for the most part it was like equal hit and miss except that like it comes out a little on top so that's why it's not going to get a 2.5 um i agree i like the way they mostly utilize like the blurple color um it just felt like i just feel like this director maybe didn't have the chops to kind of like it Ooh. felt almost there it felt almost there i would agree with that I just like, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to put it on him. That's like just my gut kind of feeling is like, I feel like a different director could have probably elevated this film. Maybe not to what, I think maybe, maybe not just to like a perfect film. <laughs> yeah. I well, think it, I, he hasn't but I directed do think, like 30 years too, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So I, but I do think that like, I, in, I don't know, I'm putting it on him. So, uh, yeah, overall though, I, um, enjoyed it well enough, but I don't really want to watch it again. Um, I put it at a three, three out of five. Cool. Yeah. I, I actually do want to see this at least once more. Um, primarily because the first time I watched Mandy, I was just like, not really into it. I, I, I was left kind of just like lost at like what the director was trying to do with the movie. I don't really feel that way now. Um, but there are a lot of, uh, parallels like we were talking about earlier between this and Mandy. I want to watch it one more time. Um, just to kind of get it cemented in my brain. Uh, but as far as like things I did enjoy about this movie is a lot of the visuals are, are very well done. Maybe not all of them, but most of them I would say are pretty effective. Um, there's some really, really creepy moments. Um, the mom cutting your fingers off in the kitchen. I really like that moment. Uh, the part where she's like melting into her son is horrific. Um, the little blurple bugs that fly around look really good. Um, I, I, I think the majority of the, the special effects look solid. Uh, and I think there's enough Nick Cage freakouts in this movie to, to get you by if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> if you want some, some Cage, there's enough there. Probably You probably want a little more than you get, but there's enough there, I think. Um, it is long. It's, it's bloated, and it just... The script needs to be tightened. Uh, the the editing needs to be tightened. It's just kind of, it feels a little loose and sort of unsatisfying in the end. Um, what was it all for? Not quite sure. It, it's not really wrapped up for you in any way. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to come in with a three as well, though. I'm kind of sitting right where you guys wow. are. It's... Um, I can't remember the last time we had a flat lateral like, like yeah, flat. me either. It's like I was, yeah. I was kind of torn between a two point five and a three, but it's like it's definitely more good than bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know, three, but three, just three, slightly, three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just <laughs> yeah. just slightly, yeah. Um, so aggregate's gonna be a three. Let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten Tomatoes segment here and see what the critics and users think about Color Out of Space. Certified fresh to death. All right, for the newbies in the bunch, we are going to do our Rotten Tomatoes segment now, which is where I will know the scores, and these guys will try to guess them. That's both the critic score and the user score. We're going to start with the critic score out of 100%. There are 128 reviews for this for the, from the critics. Okay. Um, Juice, why don't you start us off? All right, Bob, I swept the board last week. You got <laughs> you got what it takes. You yes. got what it takes to come against the stains. I'm taking All the right. <laughs> Um, Let me see. Um, I feel like the critics, I don't, I feel like we're men of the people this time. I'm feeling like people are a little torn on this. Maybe they'll give it a little bump um, coming off of like Mandy. I feel like this, I feel like this movie's going to get a lot of passes because of Mandy. People just, I don't know. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm a, I'm gonna go sixty nine. I'm sixty. Whoa, now. comedy number right out of the gate. Yep. I think it's, I think it's right around there. Honestly. All right, All right. Bobby, what you got for me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take our number and go. I'm going hard with it. Straight sixty. Sixty. Yeah. Sixty. Okay. All right. All right, so let's see. That means that Juice, you are going to take this Bob. You got score. what it takes. I wouldn't celebrate too hard though, because you're <laughs> eh, you're a good fifteen points off. So oh, this okay. is eighty four percent. Wow, eighty four is certified, and it is eighty four percent. So wow. What's I mean, the Baron. Consensus? So here's the consensus, uh, as the critics say. A welcome return for director Richard Stanley. Color Out of Space mixes tart B-movie pulp with visually alluring Lovecraftian horror and a dash of gonzo Nicolas Cage. The the movie they just described is a much better movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It really is. That's the thing. It's like this movie by like Mm. by that distillation should be should have been more enjoyed than I I should have enjoyed it more than I did. Yeah. I don't know. All right. You guys want to try the uh, 
the user score. We always fight the for the user. users here. I assume that the those numbers are going to be much, much lower. They are. It's 57 verified ratings. Oh, so, I mean, damn. this is brand new. Damn. Brand it's new. A, it's brand new, but it's all, and it's also a new rating system and all that shit. So, Bob, yeah. we'll start with you this time. What do you got for me? Wow. Uh, 70, please. 70. All right, Juice, what you got? Uh... I'm going to go low. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not too low. 69? No. (laughs) I'll go 65. 65. 65. All right. 69. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right, Bob. You broke the the streak. Ah, Bob. So the audience scored this at a 79%. So still overall favorable. 57 scores. Man, we are you not get. men of the people. That's no, not we are not. not off. Although I will say I did scroll down and read some of the um, direct reviews from direct directly from different people. And there were a few that, that or there was at least one that kind of like distillated what I thought of this movie, which is Rex Reed from the observer who like him or love him, love him or hate him. <laughs> here he is. Um, Rex. There's nothing to think about here, but a lot to describe. I think that's pretty much right. No, yeah, that's pretty solid, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, that's true. That's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. It's that's it, really. Like the the whatever the subtext of this movie is does not matter. Is not like it really see, and it's Lovecraftian. So you got to think that it should be like that's that's why yeah, you, you should Lovecraft, be thinking about it more. Yeah, thinking of existential horror things. Um, huh. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's so, that's all. Way to way to kill it, Rex. Way to do our jobs in like four well, words. He's a top <laughs> critic, and he works for the Observer. I don't, I don't think he's doing our job. I think we're trying to do his. Um, <laughs> if we were like him, failing we'd have, miserably, we'd have no show mm-hmm. at all. <laughs> yeah, too short. Well, he might have a podcast. We need to look into that. No, we don't. I doubt it. The man's uh, <laughs> he's ancient. Um. All right. Rex? Shall we? Yeah, uh, we shall. We're doing a little bit of trivia. You got some do trivia? Do it. Let's do it. It's totally time for trivia. So me and Randy have swapped roles, so I would like to uh, gather around, children. This is a new segment <laughs> with your boy Soju. I'm going to learn you something. Let's call it learn you something. No, we with won't. With your boy Soju. We won't. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> Maybe we should. I don't know. Hit hit us up on Slack. Should we Stain call it Lavinia? Oh something. my god. <laughs> Lavinia has a paperback copy of the Necronomicon yep. in the film. The book itself was a fictional invention by H.P. Lovecraft. But in 1977, somebody called Simon under like a pseudonym published a book by the same name. This book and the film is the one um, that Lavinia reads is that one, I guess, by Simon. Yeah, that she uses in her ritual. Um, Miskatonic so. University makes an appearance in this too. True. Mm. In the form of a sweatshirt. True. Nicholas Cage um, said that he always wanted to make a Lovecraft adaptation um, as a tribute to his father, who was a big fan of Lovecraft, apparently. So, hey. There you go. You, yeah, good. Making Diddy proud. <laughs> this, I like this. Uh, Richard Stanley, the director, his favorite Cage movie is Vampire's Kiss. It should so, be. good taste in film. Well, no he wonder asked, Low, Low makes his rich re- re- Well, he asked Nicholas to use the same style of performance. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> When I read that, I was like, yes. I mean, like, I recognize, I was like, that's fucking Peter Lowe. Uh-huh, but, like, yeah. to hear that, like, he specifically asked for it, I was like, oh, shit. My name is Peter Lowe. That's awesome. <laughs> this, uh, this Stanley, this Richard Stanley guy seems a little strange. I looked him up a little bit. But director Richard Stanley and Swedish filmmaker Henrik Mahler performed a ritual to the Lovecraftian god Yus. Soltoth, while uh, to You'll get stop. this film made, <laughs> in it order worked. to get this film made. Hey, you know what? They uh, maybe we should try that. You y o u s o t h o t h. You Soltoth. You Soltoth. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 
So Lots Richard Stanley, well, worshiping the old Lovecraftian gods. Those things are scary, man. But they're, um, like, but they're made gods? up by a dude from the 1900s. Well, we know I this. Know. <laughs> so like <laughs> these guys, what did they? It's like I don't know. It's like we got together with a Ouija board to try and like get good luck for the <laughs> people, podcast. I mean, people do that shit. I do that. I every know. Week. Um, but I mean, we yeah. do you do that every week, Bob. Every, no wonder we suck. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah. Ooh, that's that's kind of weird. Richard Stanley's first feature. F- this is Richard Stanley's first feature film, and more than twenty years since the infamous Island of Doctor Moreau, oh, which was released shit. in nineteen ninety six. Oh, yeah. that movie has um. Well, it has a reputation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm unfamiliar 90, yeah, with same it. Same guy. I can't remember the whole full story, but I think they like, I have changed not directors it. midway, and it's like completely bad shit. They were like uh, rewriting it as it went. I think Orson Welles was in it, and he was like, or so, I can't remember the details of this, but I'm doing a terrible job. But there's a really fucking interesting story about their making of that movie, and it was a colossal bomb. <laughs> colossal <laughs> bomb. They just spent so much money, and it fucked. It fucked off to the audiences. So I want to see it. Yeah. Um, you, you might enjoy it knowing that. I mean, I, there was a, I watched some sort of featurette on YouTube. I'll try and find it and put it in the show notes or something. But um, there's some, somebody broke down that the whole story on YouTube in a really f- entertaining way. So I'll try and add that. Cool. I got two more for you. Both Nicolas Cage and Richard Stanley at one point of their life went in search for the Holy Grail. I looked into this a little bit for on the Nick Cage side. He has like done some interviews what? where he talked about like, like just going on this like wild like goose chase of like going to these different monuments and trying to buy these like different artifacts. Was it <laughs> research for fucking national treasure? I, he says like I just like got lost in it. I buy this one and it referenced this one thing, so I go buy it and I like have it transcribed. <laughs> Dude, no so, wonder you I didn't read on the Richards, dude. Side. Come on, he's Nick. Indiana Jones. Yeah, Nick Cage yeah. is a nuts Indiana guy. Ch- I, <laughs> this is that. I that, wish that, I could be there. I wish I could just like hang out with Nick Cage and encourage him to do wild shit with all of his money. Like, yeah, let's go look for the Holy Grail, Nick. You, let's you go just, do it. <laughs> your, your dream, your dream job is to be the devil on a millionaire's shoulder. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't think of a better job. So. <laughs> I would love to do that. Nick, hit me up. I'll be a shit boy. We'll do <laughs> wild boy. shit together. <laughs> or more. I'll watch you do wild shit. <laughs> yeah. I will encourage you to do the wildest shit. In a Q&A exactly. with Richard Stanley, Stanley claimed that the film would be the first of a trilogy with a Dunwich horror adaptation coming next. So he just wants to make a bunch of... He, yeah, he wants to make some... I don't know. I don't think this guy's got it, man. I don't think he can do it. Look, in the in the pantheon of Lovecraftian adaptations, this one ranks pretty high. All yeah, it's considered. solid. It's solid. And so, yeah. if somebody's going to do that, then I, I, I there are worse choices than than this guy. I mean, all flaws and all, it's still better than like half the shit that people tried to throw together. Yeah, and partially because it kind of ditches the a little bit. I mean, I don't know how he's going to do it with Dunwich Horror, but the whole story and like so many of Lovecraft stories are really like just like fear of the it's fear of the unknown but in in lovecraft's case it was fear of you know immigrants and like black people and women and like any sort of like major societal change that was what he was like describing and it's like i i listened to this um this uh person on youtube today who was like basically a book report about the story and they were like yeah this story is about you know fearing ha- like if you if the basic mix of, of your society starts changing bit by bit until it's no longer recognizable, it doesn't exist anymore. And that's what he was afraid of, which is very close to a white supremacist argument. So I'm <laughs> like, I'm glad that they kind of sidelined that aspect of it, even though it like, maybe that's why this movie seems like a little bit fucked up in terms of like not having subtext because they excised the subtext that it had because it was so fucked up on its own merits. So I don't know how he's going to do that with Dunwich though, because that's an even more direct case of that situation happening. Um, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I hope so. I would like to check it out anyway. Change is scary, Randy. Change is scary. You know, (laughs) you know what? 
I'm glad they not. took. You know what? I'm glad they took the politics out of my horror movie. I'm glad yeah, they thank just, God. Oh just they exercised that out. They of it. took a scalpel and they just <laughs> cut that little politics center right out of the middle of this movie. <laughs> Just pure spectacle for me, baby. Justin. Yep. Hey, since you're running <laughs> trivia and you're like trying to make it your own thing, here's here's a tagline for you. Here you go. How, how about how All about right, this? Do me ta- tag me, Bob. All right, tag uh, team. Uh, Soju's trivia. Stain your brain. Stain your brain. You know, sure. I would be much more enthused about that if uh, <laughs> anybody had ever thought to make me a fucking tagline when I was doing <laughs> goddamn trivia. <laughs> Thankless fucking Randy. Rob is my also nickname. S- so <laughs> excited about it. We could I mean, still call it "Learn You Something, Stain Your Brain." Le- le- no, you can't. It's one or the other. <laughs> you can't. It's too many words. Well, I'm going to call it st- ju- ju- so "Juices ju- Inferior ju- Trivia ju- Segment." That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> Gather round, children. Let Soju tell you a story. God. Welcome to Soju's. Inferior trivia section. <laughs> Randy says salty. Nobody we traded. Me fun, we equally traded. I All even right, gave I'm you calling the, the Rotten Tomatoes the big dick swing and hey. guess the score segment. <laughs> Randy, That's fine. <laughs> this movie had a whole scene about Rotten Tomatoes. You should be thankful. That's true. I don't know where I, the thankful part comes in, but that is true that that happened in this movie. <laughs> Nick you Cage recognized you in your segment himself. Uh, it doesn't get much better. All right. They taste well, like that, shot. They taste like shot. <laughs> this car is a cocksucker. Learn you something. No, whatever. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk cooters. We got we to gotta go hunting. Here we go. God damn this thing. It's totally ta- nope. It's cooter, a cooter, a cooter of the week. <laughs> wow! It literally will not play. <laughs> there we go. It will not play. I, could, I oh, was wow. mixing all the bombs together. It's totally no. It's totally a cooter. No. It's totally <laughs> time to cooter hunt my rotten tomatoes. <laughs> Certified cooter of the week. <laughs> Stain your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's so excited about that. Oh, uh, we're talking cooters. Uh, Ju- Justin, what constitutes a cooter? Let's talk a cooter. Let's hunt them. Um, so cooter character type. We got the five points on the chart. We talk in manipulation. We talk in sexual deviance, smug arrogance, patheticness, and overall look or attire. So who is our cooter of the week, boys? We got also, if you've been watching our video game reviews at the end, we're slowly, slowly building this like 16 bit straight chilling video game piece by piece. And we're thinking about calling it like cooter hunters. What, what do you, what do you guys think about it? Would you guys play a, a, a SNES style cooter hunters with your boys? I don't know how I feel <laughs> about don't. having something called yeah. Cooter Hunter. So, to be clear, this <laughs> my was resume. not discussed at all, and this is just Justin talking. So No, this is totally discussed. Was not. There was totally a text. <laughs> of us? No, right. no, 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 no. There are receipts. Uh-huh. There was. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So who, who's the Cooter of this movie? Uh, the alpacas? I don't know. They got milked. So. The alpaca. They got milk. Bob, we take this. Can we please take this seriously? Okay. There are cooters amongst us. We got to hunt them. Um, so, who we got? Is anybody smug air? I mean, I guess if anything, it's got to be on the Nick Cage side. Yeah, uh, I guess. PLO. Is it sexual deviance if you make out with your wife, but she's also fused to your a son mutant. and becoming a monster? <laughs> Is that sexual uh, deviance? I don't think so. You do Especially because you your do. brain's getting fucked with. Do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta I'm do. I'm always said holes is holes. <laughs> Whoa. That's what she said. <laughs> um, what about the color? 
Can the color I think it's be the, the color. cooter? I guess. I mean, if anything, because uh, it's it looks ridiculous. So we got that uh, well, attire it's, going. It's for looks, it looks. It's it's a, attire is definitely a little weird because it's not a color that humans can see. Right. It's not um, pathetic. Uh, it's manipulative because it's changing. Everything. It is manipulative. Uh, sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. Same way as the sun god. And it week. makes what's our yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes. Uh, it also has a thing for cats, Bob, just like you. Like the ancient Egyptian yeah. kitties it, <laughs> and alpacas. They, they really figured something out, didn't they? Uh, it's not arrogant because it's nothing. There's no pin backer to, to label. Well, the yeah, like, it doesn't there's no have representative. Like a profit. It's not going to roll in and change your whole fucking world if it doesn't think it's important or that it knows some shit that you don't know, you know? Maybe it's just trying to survive. Maybe it's scared, Bob. Maybe it's on an alien have planet. Have sympathy for like... the, the color, Rob. <laughs> Where's your heart? Are you trying to say Blurple is a cooter, Bob? Is that yeah, your claim? It's not, it's not pathetic, and it's not really sexually deviant because it's a color, and I don't see how that. Yeah. But the other three, yeah, that's my vote. Color, that's my vote. I vote. I Wait, vote. What no are the cooter. other three? Three out of five. No. How is there three? No. There's right, a tire. Well, there's manipulation, and what? Self-importance. I think no, that's not. a reach. <laughs> 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 it needs a profit, Bob. There's no profit. There's nobody uh, speaking for the for the blurb. Uh, actually, you know what? Chong does kind of speak for it, but what does he say? What he is says he it's a destroyer say? and shit. I don't know. It was not good things. He says okay. puff puff pass or something like that. <laughs> oh shit. I don't know. It's, so, puff, puff, it's pass, the color Diddy. or it's nothing. That's it. I think it's nothing personally. Like, like I, nothing, Bob. Man. Just to just to <laughs> spite you. You're, you're, You've Whatever. been making some wild Whatever. claims, Bob. You, you're just to, trying to make your mark in the cooter. That's a wild world. claim. <laughs> it's the sun. It's this color. Hey, man. Oh, I can't man. just name things cooter, Bob. I received all really some positive feedback regarding the sun by multiple people <laughs> in the Slack channel. Okay. Uh-huh. So uh, I just, I am one just, with the cooter hunters. You don't know shit. Stay in your brain. Bob, I oh, Rob, we don't do this. We don't do this for the groupies, Bob. We do it to protect the, people from cooters. I mean, I didn't okay? like ask before I said it. I said it and people were like, yeah, Bob, Bob is Oh, uh, right. you said it so they'd gargle on your shit. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> gargle on your shit that is, is all a big power play good lord that's not even you got any horror news true. yeah yeah w- will you just hang on a second <laughs> let me it's get totally to time it. for horror news trivia let's talk about some horror <laughs> with news. a cooter here named we, blurb here we go extra extra read all about it we're talking about Is this another it two episode where we're just falling apart. We can never oh, have yeah. another episode again. Yep. <laughs> no, we're going to do just a lot the- more of these regardless of what people, <laughs> people want. Um, so we got some horror news here. We're talking about a new show. That's going to be a, a series on FX. Um, it's being created by uh, the same dude that did true detective. And it's also going to be starring Matthew McConaughey. So that's neat. Uh, show. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. The show is called Redeemer. Uh, yeah, created by Nick Pizzolatto. Um, uh, the, uh, so the, uh, the synopsis here is, um, it's about a, uh, well, actually it's based on a novel called The Churchgoer. Um, it's starring Matthew McConaughey. It's a miniseries, um, about a dissolute security guard whose search for a missing woman in Texas leads him through a corruption steeped criminal conspiracy as his past and present impact and entwine around a mystery of escalating violence and deceit, uh, which sounds kind of similar, right? Yeah. It sounds <laughs> like it's in their wheelhouse as a duo. Yeah. yeah. I would watch that. It just makes me a little concerned about the future of true detective. Um, yeah. I really like season three a lot. So me too. I kind of want another one of those. Yeah. Season <laughs> four. Season four hasn't been greenlit. I haven't heard anything about it. So. I haven't heard anything about it either. And now that I'm thinking on it, I'm after they concerned. rushed into that second one, though, they were like, "Well, maybe we should." Yeah, take it was a time. surprise. They took their time with season three, which is great. You know, like I guess that it hasn't been it. greenlit. That I guess yeah. that's yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just wanted a break from. Maybe they just wanted to do something else, and that's fine. I just like I do still kind of want that. I don't want that show to be dead. <laughs> yeah, me either. But if it is, at least we got this like backup show. Yeah, at least yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
It's on FX though, so you know, I don't know what that means, but it's not HBO. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's just TV because it's not HBO. Uh, less nudity, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. FX makes some pretty solid stuff. So. No, they do. I'm being pithy, but no, it's a uh, you pithy. It's a good uh, show, they have so. a little show called "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" that someone yeah. enjoys. Someone somewhere who does. I don't know. Chrissy Orlando. No, it's ha, okay. Ha, it's, ha, right. ha. it's not great. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, so keep your eyes and ears open for Redeemer coming. I don't know because no one knows. It hasn't been uh, announced <laughs> when that's going to come. Next bit of news. Great news segment, Bob. Next, next bit of news we got here. Uh, so this is so the Friday the Thirteenth film franchise is uh, it's locked up in litigation. It's in a bit of a pickle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's it's in the courts. Uh, there's a bit of a custody battle. People are fighting over rights and who gets paid for what and how much they get paid for. Um, it's uh, it's going to re-enter uh, the court system on Friday the thirteenth of was it April? It's the first Friday the thirteenth of the year. I think it might be in April. I'm not sure. It's March or April. Um, so it's going to re-enter the court system on Friday the thirteenth, which is. Perfect timing, I suppose. Um, if they don't reach a settlement after that, it's I guess they're going to have to like settle out of court amongst themselves, which doesn't seem to be likely, or else they would have done that. Or it's no, gonna, yeah, what? Or it's going to go to the Supreme Court. So it's like they, it's escalating. Wait, that's this case. I'm un- I'm unclear. It's got to that's that's not the Supreme Court. That's got to be like the state Supreme Court. I I don't know. Probably. California states. Uh, well, what is what is this issue? I don't remember this. I don't know all the details off the top of my head, but it's I know like it's the, fucking up my game. It's, it's the producer <laughs> versus the writer, and like the writer is claiming that he is being underpaid. Uh, so I'm um, I'm speaking of the writer of the original Friday the Thirteenth movie, in which Jason Voorhees, as we know him, is not in. Does not exist. So yeah. so he's saying he deserves royalties for the original plus every sequel. Whereas I guess the producer is saying, well, yeah, you did write the first movie, but Jason Voorhees, as we know him, is not in that movie. You should not get paid for that character. Huh. Uh, so they're they're going back and forth about that, as I understand it. There might be some more nuance That's to tough it. Tough call. Um, so yeah. they're they're doing Maybe that, that. Should be our prompt this week. And, where um, do you fall? Where should do you they pay the man? <laughs> no, people don't give a shit. They just want another Friday the Thirteenth movie. Whatever, like <laughs> fucking get over your shit. Anyway, um, so Osgood Perkins has a new movie coming to theaters this Friday. It's that Gretel and Hansel movie, and he's been you know making the rounds, talking to the press and whatnot. And he kind of offhand threw a, a rem- remark out saying that he would love to direct a Friday the Thirteenth movie. So if they ever do get this shit settled, maybe Osgood Perkins will uh, direct a Friday the Thirteenth movie, which would be bizarre because the shit that he does is very like art housey and slow burn and. Not like a big flashy guts and gore slasher movie in any way. He's that's what we need. We need some new people coming out with new ideas for slashers. God damn, we've had like forty years of slashers just cutting people up. They've done a lot of like pretty intriguing slashers in the last few years. Like just nothing on the like scale of a fright. Like nothing with those franchises. Just their own things. You know, for better or for worse, I don't love it. But Happy Death Day is a take on it. You know, like fucking uh, Final Girls, a take on it. Yeah, like there's Halloween 2018. <laughs> yeah, actually, they did the comedy that's route. True. That's true. The Bon Me saga, <laughs> Bon Me trilogy, baby. Bring it on. Ooh, um, thank, thank God. So, uh, also in the news, Universal and Blumhouse are teaming up to develop a new version of The Thing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, so this is going to mm-hmm. adapt. Grab the, your pitchforks. <laughs> this is going to adapt the long lost original novel, which I did not know was lost. But long apparently, lost. Apparently it is. I don't fucking know what that means. So wait, I don't. Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? So uh, was the original like fifties version? Somebody was just like, ah, I, I read this book once. Eh, it's crazy. There's like a thing in the ice, and then there's a bunch of researchers. Yeah. What, what was fuck? this? Mm-hmm. I'm confused. So. 
Um, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing and the film that preceded it, uh, 1951's The Thing from Another World, were both adaptations of the novella called Who Goes There? Pinned by John W. Oh. John W. Campbell Jr. Mm-hmm. wrote that. It was first published in August of 1938, issue of Astounding Science Fiction, and uh, an expanded, never-before-seen version was recently unearthed. So I guess it's pulling, oh, okay. pulling from that. Uh, so it's not a published work, even. I, I guess not. Oh. Whatever, That's not man. the appeal, though. That's That was never the appeal of... <laughs> no, it's just another way that they can make a movie without, without like... Yeah. While having was... some sort of claim to originality. Yeah, and nobody uh, loves John me. Carpenter's The Thing because it like depicted this novella so well. Like that's not that's I'm, not. Part I'm of intrigued, it. but it's by still that. the writing. Like I'm intrigued by that specifically because if they're gonna make a thing movie, it has to be changed like pretty substantially, or else like nobody's gonna give a fuck because it's been done fucking really well. So maybe the yeah. whatever's in this unreleased version has a lot of additional material that's gonna change the story and make it interesting. I have a feeling own. what's gonna yeah. happen is like my 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 suspicion. If I'm looking back at like what the story is and uh, when this was written, I would think that maybe the story goes beyond the Arctic. Like maybe, maybe yeah. that's kind of where I see that. Like that's where it can make its, its own presence. You know, um, I don't think that like, it's, it's an, it's like all remakes and reboots and all those things. My hope is low that it'll be worthwhile, but you know, like they're they're They have some sort of reasoning for what they're doing for better or for worse. I guess we'll see. I still haven't seen the prequel, so I've heard that it's fine. And that's about what I would expect from this too. It's fine. Yeah, I feel like at <laughs> best, like at Bad best we fun. could hope for like a like a Halloween 2018, like something that's like medium and it's like, yeah, but it's nothing compared to the original, but it's like, eh, it got us by, I guess. Yeah. So they threw some well, comedic we jokes can in there. We get by without it. That's <laughs> something it's like we can get I by know. without these remakes, but the studios will not allow that. The uh the full manuscript is actually titled Frozen Hell. Um, so the novella is mm-hmm. called Who Goes There, but the full version is called Frozen Hell, which is kind of cool. I'm, I'm down down with that. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. I I have faith in Blumhouse, generally speaking. Not everything they make yeah. is amazing, but I, I, I'm I definitely like a... I'm, I'm waving their flag, and I have been for a while. So. Yeah, I'm still a fan. I just... Uh, you know, uh, it, there's doubts. There's yeah. doubts here. If, any, if anybody's going to do it, I'm glad it's them. Um doesn't really need to happen, but hopefully it's different. Are they going to call it the thing again? Do we know what its title is going to no, be? Yet? No, I don't okay. know. Not sure. The um, thing frozen hell. That would be fine. Just like they could just call it frozen hell. I think it'd be better, but yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, Give it a clear delineation. Be, it needs to be separated. Yeah. In some way, even, but they don't want to do. That's the thing is they, the, the studios, even Cash. Blumhouse doesn't want to do that because name that recognition. automatically cuts the name recognition aspect off. And they did it with Dr. Sleep. They did it with Dr. Sleep, but that was also like one that's, of the biggest budgeted biggest. Uh, that's just the name of had, the story though. Like that's, that's the name of the yeah, Stephen King saying. book. That's the name of the Stephen King book. And it's also like, a, it was a marketing juggernaut. Like they spent so much marketing that movie. They and you said knew it was Dr. related. They recreated they parts <laughs> of fucking The Shining just to put it in the trailer, just so you can get off to the to the yeah. of watching. Uh, I'm the just Shining. saying. I'm getting off <laughs> to this trailer. <laughs> they could they could have called it Doctor Sleeps in The Shining. So they did. <laughs> the Shining's Doctor Sleep Town. The Shining <laughs> Part Two. Stain your brain. Stay in your Hey, we got a voicemail this week. Uh, if you are listening to the show, you'd like to call in and leave us a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, you can do that at 904 638 3231. So we. You got, could be famous. You, don't you want to be famous? Like us? You get that shit. You want to be here. famous, don't you? Get that God, that weak I mean, you shit said, out of here. You say that with too much vigor. Like you've said that before. Yeah, you know, like another you, context. You're saying it I'm like you mean sure. it, and that's weird. And you're saying it like you've said this to some naive people in the past. Oh God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't like where this is going. So we got one voicemail uh, from our good friend Jim G. Baby. Let's see what old Jim has to say. Yo, what's up, gang? It's uh, G. Baby. Uh, just calling in. Talk about. Uh, color 
of the space on the, the hotline screen. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm curious, really curious to hear you guys break it down and see what your thoughts are. But I think all in all, I'd, I'd give it a light recommend. I, I thought I was going to like it a lot more than I did. Um, I was actually a little disappointed. Um, I don't think they used Nick Cage to their full advantage, but some of the visuals and uh, the story was interesting. Uh, the scene with the mom and the fucking kid from Hell House getting stuck together, it just fucked me up. That was so hard to watch. That was probably the worst part for me, but and the coolest. Um, I don't know. I thought... That I wish uh, the director would have got together with the dudes who did The Void. I think that they, they could have gone a little bit harder and uh, coupled with the visual style of Color Out of Space and maybe sprinkle in like a little slither, you know, and utilize Nicolas Cage a little bit more. It could have, the whole movie could have popped a little bit better. So that's kind of what I was hoping for. And I, I was a little let down, but. I enjoyed the experience. Uh, curious to hear what you guys think about it. Um, yeah, the, the prompt too, I think from last episode, you got to go with, uh, Captain America. It's like, fuck that other ship. Stay on mission. But then again, that wouldn't have made a good movie if everything would have went right and they did what they're supposed to do perfectly. So, um, yeah, looking forward to the next prompt. Uh, what you guys have going and uh, keep chilling boys thanks for calling Jim always good to hear from you and yeah I kind of agree with him you know I think we all agree with him in general but like them not using Nick Cage to like his fullest potential yeah I mean you probably could have had him ham it up a little bit and made made like the lesser interesting parts more interesting you know know. just feels like everyone can see that there was more potential here yeah. And it yeah. just didn't feel like they capitalized on all I feel of like they were afraid or just unwilling to add a whole lot more or change a whole lot more than they did to the Lovecraft yeah. thing. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know, there's a lot from the story that is, like, like it's easy to tell that they were pretty married to the, to the original concepts of the, of the book while excising some of the more, like, troubling shit about that. But, like, they they really didn't, I don't know. They, they, they could have gone further and made the characters more relatable to us before fucking with them. And I think that would have yeah. gone a long way. True. True. That. And uh, yeah, Jim was referencing our, our show from last week, Sunshine, where there was a very pivotal uh, choice uh, one of the characters <laughs> had to make. And uh, Jim was saying, play it safe. Play it safe. Don't be dumb. Don't be a dummy. No. Don't, be don't like risk dumb. it all. Be like Captain America. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bob. So spiteful. <laughs> Whatever. Why uh, do you hate Captain America, Bob? I don't. Uh, <laughs> but again, if you're listening, you want to call and leave us a voicemail next week. You can uh, hit us up at nine zero four six three eight three two three one. Do you fellas have any questions you'd like to pose for for next week? Didn't you I pose one. a prompt earlier? You did, but nobody can remember. So I can't remember. Not Go back and listen to us 20 minutes ago <laughs> and answer that question. Whatever that was, <laughs> answer that one. Are you excited oh. for a trilogy of this uh, Lovecraft business mm. from Richard Stanley? That's my prompt. Are Would you interested? Do you want to see it? Would you drink milk from an alpaca? Yes or no? Ooh, Straight? Would you squeeze? Yeah, <laughs> straight. Mixed with what? Straight yeah. out of the alpaca. I drink alpaca milk, not straight. I don't want to drink any milk straight. Mm-hmm. I like it chilled, baby. You got to keep it cool. I mean, yeah, that's not straight and cool or different things. You talking about I know, straight I'm from saying the I would drink alpaca milk, but I want to drink it straight from the tea. No, okay, then, throw it in the fridge. So pasteurize you, it or whatever. Pasture. Oh, these are like three different things now that you're talking about. <laughs> you're, you're all over. Why the can't you throw alpaca no, milk the in the fridge, Bob? Why? Why do you have to drink it straight from the tea? Okay, you, you said suck straight, it right straight from, from the, the tea. tea, and then you said cold, and then you said pasteurized. 
It, yeah, three, like, three okay, things. Nick Cage milks an um, alpaca and drinks it. I want to throw it in the fridge yeah, a little bit. No, would you drink sure it warm? Straight from the oh tip. Oh, my God. Just kiss already. <laughs> like, would you drink it like like Nick Cage does? Like a man. Like a real man. No. All right. Well, I want it chilled. Impasteurized. Get it. <laughs> in, get, get Peter Lowe likes his pasteurized milks. <laughs> Whatever happened to teamwork? <laughs> he says some shit about teamwork Get the in the fuck movie. Fuck out of my face. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's it. That's all we got this week uh, here at Straight Chilling. What a shit show. Uh, <laughs> wasn't that bad. We'll be it's back. Probably good. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. We're gonna we're gonna be getting into yet another Patreon pick. Uh, oh, we're, yeah. we're gonna be talking about a movie. It was chosen by the man that you just heard from calling in oh, Jim G shit. baby's pick. The movie Jim G Jim G the movie is called the being. And I'm pretty sure Jim said it was on Amazon streaming on Amazon prime. I think that's not a good sign. Uh, <laughs> it's called the being. I don't know what year it came out. Let me look that up real quick. Cause I don't know if there are multiple, the beings I have never heard of this movie. I don't know shit. It was like 1983. 83, 1983. The big. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So with a three pointer. Holy shit. So check that out. Get ready for Jock next Bob week. should get that, that reference. Jock Bob, old man Bob, whatever, whatever. <laughs> uh, so until next week, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling, on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. You can send us an email through our website, straightchillingpodcast.com. If you'd like to join our Slack channel, join in on the weekly conversations, the daily conversations about the movie of the week. Talk about TV shows, music, news, anything and everything we want. Just let me know on any one of the social media platforms and I'll send you a link so you can join in on the Slack channel. Watch Justin play video games on Twitch. Keep your eyes and ears open for Justin's uh, top five Tuesday videos dropping next Tuesday. Uh, we got another mini cast dropping later this week. Keep your eyes and ears open for that. We got oh. new episodes of Let's Get Physical Media dropping first week of February. Vote in the bracket of blood. Uh, I think that's everything. Maybe. Probably. We got some new merch coming at you. Watch out for that, too. We got a lot of stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, engage with us. And until next week... As always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling.